Welcome to another Lutro Customs Guide. Uh, it's been a while since my last one. Uh, most of you guys know that I've opened up a store now, uh, www.lutrocustoms.com. Basically, I have taken the step from doing guides and uh, teaching to also supplying uh, the supplies needed to also sleeve. Um, all the supplies in the store are stuff that I've used personally. Um, I've taken tons of time uh, picking out the exact uh, tools that you're going to need for sleeving. You know, some of them are a little bit more expensive, but you know, I always try to find the best tool for the lowest price um, that will perform the best. Um, sometimes when you're getting into a project or you're getting into modding, you'll know that you'll have to uh, you know, you have to spend some money, and that's just the way it is. And those of you that make a hobby out of this, that really do enjoy sleeving, know that a quality tool will indeed uh, make the huge difference when you're sleeving. Uh, you can use staples, and you can put holes in your hands, and I've, I mean, I've, I've done everything. I've bought every tool out there, um, and that's not because I'm rich. It's because you guys have made that happen, uh, either by donation or by, by buying from the store. Uh, all the testing and stuff that I do is na namely by donation so if I buy a bunch of tools it's because you guys have made it possible and uh, for the success of Lutro Customs so far uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate every kind word that you guys give me. Uh, that's just an encouragement to do more guides and you know to keep you guys uh, informed. Uh, and there's been one guide that I have not done in a long time, and no, sadly, it's not the SATA uh, power guide. I will do one of those, however, uh, sometime down the road. There's a couple different people on OCN really working together to try to get out a quality guide on that for you in a couple different ways, and I know that you guys would really like to know how to do it heat shrinkless, so uh, they're working hard to try to figure that out for you and try to make a method that's going to work through all of them. Uh, but today is going to be the crimping guide. Uh, a lot of people have bought crimpers, a lot of people have tried the MDPC uh, crimper, a lot of people have tried my crimper. Uh, honestly, they're pretty close to the same tool. Um, they're made by the same people. Uh, no, this is a great guy. If you live in Germany, please buy his crimper and buy stuff from him. Uh, his sleeving is uh, still top notch. Um, but the big difference between my crimper and his is I have a custom 16 gauge wire. Uh, 16 gauge wire is a pain in the butt uh, to crimp. So you know what, let me not get into all that right now. Let's just move on down, well that looks really bad. Let's just look on down here to the table and let me get into the guide and show you. All right, so Let's start showing you everything that you're going to need to do here. Uh, obviously, you're going to need wire. You're going to need a crimper. Uh, the crimper that I'm going to be using is, of course, my Lutro Custom crimper. Oh, yeah, whatever. This is the way that you guys will get it packaged. I test every one of them and I tape some crimps on there to show you the work. Um, Again, I spend a lot of time on these to make sure that they're perfect because if you have a bad crimp, uh, then you're, I mean, not only are you spending a bunch of time on sleeving, but if you're making custom wires, you're putting a lot of time into that project. So you're going to want to make sure that every aspect of it is right. I'm going to go over pretty much every single crimp and show you guys how, how to do it. But I'm going to start out with the most basic. Um, for sake of keeping everything uh, pretty much the same, I'm going to be using a smaller diameter wire. Uh, this is just your basic UL, w, or UL007 wire. Um, it's an 18 gauge wire. Uh, it's not one of my custom ones, uh, but I will show you guys those at the very end. But for sake of keeping everything the same, I'm going to stick to uh, this wire. And the reason I want to stick to this wire while I do these guides is because most of the time, this is what you guys are buying everywhere you guys are, unless you guys have bought, you know, the custom wire from me. 
So that is why I am choosing this one for the guide. So you have your wire. You're going to need your crimper, a wire cutter. I sell these flush cutters in the store. They are very sharp. Um, but with any you know, cutter at all, if you use it on wire, it's going to lose its uh, sharpness. So I always suggest you get one for sleeving, one for cutting your cable. Um, so we're just going to get started here. Uh, basically the signs of a good crimp is uh, basically a heart shape. Or not a heart shape, that's bad, but uh, it's going to be your bite crimp where it bites into the wire. And I'm going to do one really quick and then I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Um, I'm using the Nipix wire stripper, which is what I use for everything. It does strip a little bit longer. Uh, hearsay out there right now is two millimeters is about the length that you want to strip your wire. Uh, I prefer three millimeter or a little bit longer. And the reason I do that is because it goes into the connector and it gives more connection, wire to metal connection. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in a second. Uh, the first connector I'm gonna grab is this your basic uh, ATX female terminal. And you can see that this is the Molex one. I sell most, mostly all Molex terminals. Uh, they have the long wings right here. So when you hear people uh, talking about does it have long wings, it's this part right here. Uh, and that's really important because if all the non-OEM or the uh, third-party ones, the sad thing about those is that they're short. Uh, so you don't really get that bite into the wire. Uh, and it's just a stress relief. Uh, I want to be clear here. Um, I've talked to a lot of technical people that, you know, they do a lot of this for their living. And uh, I think as sleevers, we have this mis misconception that the bite is actually what's holding the wire. The bite is just a stress relief. Uh, what that means is that it's giving it a little bit extra hold, uh, but at the same time, what it's doing is it's making it malleable. Uh, it's making it so that all the stress isn't on these little crimps, or these little, uh, Come on, camera. These little ones right here. This is what's actually holding the wire and making the connection. This is just making it so that you can move around the wire. And I'll make an example of that here. Uh, most of you guys that have seen me work, I always pre-crimp my pins. Now, the traditional way is that you load it up and then you shove in the wire. Uh, I find that to be inaccurate. Uh, what I mean by that is you don't know that you have the wire shoved in all the way, all the time, and you could be wasting a potential wire in your time. So, depending on the gauge of wire, what you'll do is you'll do a couple clicks, uh, and you'll figure out eventually how many clicks that you need to do for that size of wire. Um, I'm gonna zoom in my camera here. And let it focus. Focus. At least it's going to try. I don't want to go too far in. There we go. So, let me point out a couple things on the crimper before I get started. Uh, obviously, you see that this is a ratchet crimper. Up on the top here, you'll see this little W pattern. This is what's going to make the bite in your wire. As you crimp, those are going to fold inward and then make the bite. Now, there's a lot of crimpers out there that have this little notch here, but it doesn't make the bite, and that's just because of the way that the tool is made. Um, as far as sleeving goes, this is one of the few, uh, actually this is the only crimper that I know that consistently does this without crushing the wire or crushing the pin or applying too much pressure. You'll notice this is an 18 to 20, uh, actually 24 to 30 and 18 to 22 gauge. It's sad that I had to read that. I crimp with them all day. Um, this is for your fans, uh, for your DuPont connectors and such forth. 
uh, and this would be for everything else. Um, but let me get back to showing you more about the crimper so you understand it. Uh, you will also see that these are milled. I mill both of these teeth on the bottom here so that this tool works better with all sizes of wire and that so it doesn't crush pins. Uh, I've seen uh, tools of this same model, uh, not necessarily nils, but I've seen uh, ones that look, they're clones just like this and they're not milled so what they do is they end up crushing uh, the actual pin into the wire and all you're doing is just making a mess and that makes it really hard to sleeve. Uh, so you'll see that there's a little divot here and a little divot there. Uh, one more thing about the crimper before we get started. Uh, this is your pressure gauge. Uh, obviously it's set on the lowest pressure possible. Um, you can increase the pressure if you want, but all these are pre-calibrated and they're all set on the lowest setting right away. Um, that is so again, so you're not crushing the pin and these are milled for this setting. Uh, if you ever wanted to mess with this at any point in time, you can. It's completely up to you. Of course, the uh, die here is removable, uh, so if you wanted to fine-tune it a little bit more on the bottom, you can take a file to it and go for it. Uh, but they should be perfectly fine and set up. Um, I'm also going to say for those of you that don't have enough money and you guys have bought other crimpers, if you have the confidence to set a file to it, you might be able to fix it enough to get it to be uh, I don't want to sound elite here, but it would be, you know, acceptable to be able to use. Uh, but it's going to take you a lot of time, and uh, I, I don't encourage you to do so unless you're very confident in what you're doing. Otherwise, you're just going to ruin them, and then it's not going to work. Uh, so, pre-crimping. What I like to do is you'll see that there's a double, let me see if I can get in close here. I want to show you the bottom side of these teeth here. You cannot focus. Okay. Now it's hard to, because my camera's flipped. You're going to have to give me a couple seconds here. Figure out which direction I'm going. Okay. Oh, come on. You'll see right here, at the end of my blade, Oh, come on, focus. At the end of my blade there, there's a little dip. There's a dip on both sides. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the wings, see if I can keep it there. Now this is really hard to do while I'm looking at you and looking at the camera to do this. So I'm just going to get it in there. And focus. Focus, there we go. So you'll see right there that, come on. See, right is left, left, left is right, up is down. Yeah, it's like I'm flying. Uh, you'll see that I have it perfectly straight in there and that the top big wings are resting on that little lip in there. So I gotta grab it properly here. And focus. What I'm gonna do is bring it down, make sure that that bottom part is right in the middle of that groove and as I'm crimping you'll see that it expands and you'll see the bite here let me get you, there we go you'll see the bite start to happen. Right now I'm at two clicks right there I'm at three clicks. The wire I'm using uses three clicks you'll see that it's already heart-shaped inward and that the bite is already starting to happen. You have a release lever right here and it just released it for you. So let's look at the pin here. You'll see now that I have a heart shape and they're already starting to go out so I might not want to do three clicks. I might, oh look at those nails. Uh, I might want to uh, do a two clicker instead of a three clicker but let me see if it fits into the wire here now if it'll focus for me what I'm doing is getting underneath 
the second pair and then since my crimps are a little bit longer and see I'm having problems getting it through right there so it's going to be a two two click so this crimp I'm going to throw away I don't like the fact that it was bowing outward already anyway so we're going to go over that first step let's see if I can get it to focus we're going to do one Two. Maybe that was three clicks. I don't know. I'm not sure. Thought I heard two. So you'll see that it's a little bit easier now. Come on. Come on. There we go. You'll see that it's a little bit easier now to get in. And again, like I said, that this wire is going inside the terminal a little bit. That's not going to mess with the functionality at all. If you get it too long, it's going to, but not at three millimeter. You'll also notice that my insulation is all the way up against the inner, the, the inner uh, wings here. Uh, and you'll also notice that by pre-crimping, it's staying where I want it to. It's not flopping around, and that normally is what makes it really hard to work with. So, I'm going to flip it around so that the wings are facing me and then I'm gonna take my gun gun my crimper come on focus upside down and remember that little lip on the other side that is where I just put the big wings again but the gun the the crimper here is flipped so you'll also see that the two little prongs that stick out are just above uh, here let me see if I can do this with one hand and I certainly can't do this with one hand hey bud you want to help me out a second Let's see if I can get somebody to help me out here yes you want to hold the crimper just like right here we're gonna have to there we go okay see these right here these two little notches I might have to press in, press in my wire again here those two little notches are just above uh, the teeth line here okay thanks and I'm gonna double check to make sure everything's right on my crimp so wings are going into that little notch and the two little notches are above it again this goes a lot faster when I'm just doing it instead of explaining everything so I'm gonna crimp down and we're just gonna crimp all the way and then let go now first of all you're gonna see that it crimped the wire that it did the bite you'll also see that these two bit into uh, the wire here. This is what's actually holding the wire onto the pin and this takes a great deal of the stress. However, this is what this is what's meant by stress relief. When I move this pin around, what's taking the stress instead of just this wire or the wire and the insulation counter and pushing and pulling and uh, turning back and forth on the actual metal here which we all know that if you twist and turn metal enough that it, it will break and get fragile that the stress relief right here is holding on to it that's why the bite is so important if it's just a uh, overlap it's not actually really holding on to it making it a good stress relief a lot of the stress is still going to be in between here or if this crushes the pin uh, what the problem be becomes then is that you are already adding extra girth to this. We can already see that on this crimp right here, we've already added a little bit. Now, sleeving, we're going to add sleeve, heat shrink, or however else we're going to do it depending on the method. So as little 
squashing as possible. This is a nice rounded out crimp. That's important because we are making this as narrow as possible. We're using the space wisely and we're making sure uh, that we don't squash it, make it basically wider than we need to because that's taking up uh, extra space that you guys need uh, when you're sleeving. So that is why a crimper is so important. People that are using you know, the hands long crimper and the other ones are wondering why they can't get the wire back in. Well, it's squashing this and it's making it bigger than it already needs to be. So not only are you trying to put sleeve in, but you're trying to put a squashed pin into a connector that wasn't really made for sleeving in the first place. Uh, everything that we're doing is aftermarket and they never thought about that when they made those connectors. So that's why we got to be so careful when we do this not to add any extra uh, you know, width to that pin. So as you can see, I always said that I was going to explain this. Uh, I like my crimps a little bit longer. My wire actually goes up inside of here. Um, that's adding more metal on metal contact. Uh, two millimeter would go right up to here somewhere in, in there and it two millimeter or three millimeter it's up to you either one works just fine uh, this is just my personal style and the way I like to do it um, also by putting the wire inside of the connector here it gives me it holds onto the wire a little bit better so I can do a good crimp job uh, you'll realize that the insulation right here is not squashed uh, it is already butted up all the way onto here, uh, these bottom wings. So we've not squashed this connector, we've made a perfect crimp, uh, and this will work perfectly in your system. Uh, again, this is just your basic female ATX Molex uh, terminal and your basic UL0007 wire um, 18 gauge. Uh, this is what you want to end up with every time. No squashing, perfect crimp, nice bite, uh, good holding on the wire. You will slice your finger if you try to pull this off. Uh, it is a very strong crimp uh, and it's what we're shooting for when we're crimping. Uh, you'll see that the insulation right here is not actually piercing uh, the insulation, which is not what we want either because if it pierces the insulation, we're losing some of our stress relief. This is just simply biting right in. Uh, for those of you that look up the Molex uh, guide for crimping, uh, they show a bunch of uh, different charts on what, what's good or bad. Uh, somewhere in between a good and bad, again, being that we're doing an aftermarket uh, job here, uh, is where we're trying to end up. So this is a good example of what you're going to want to try to you know, get at the end. So now that I've explained everything and shown you how to do a basic female crimp. Let's get into a couple of the other crimps and I will re-go over everything that I've went over uh, again and again. Let me do a two millimeter female here really quick so that you can see what I'm talking about. Again, we're putting it on that little ledge all the way in and down making sure that we're in the middle of the bottom support and it is three clicks because there is a first click there again by pre-crimping it I'm allowing myself a little bit of extra uh, control over the wire Ah, uh, you know, that wasn't two millimeter, that was another three millimeter. Let's do that again. There we go. I'm going to do this one really fast here. And you can see by the, 
that it's moving around a little bit on me here, that it's not as taut, and that's because the wire isn't in it. And I think I, I think I crushed it a little bit. No. Nope. Okay. Let me show you what we're talking about here. Oh, she cut all this stuff out, huh? You'll see that I didn't get the insulation all the way up, but that's okay. This is just for demonstration purposes. But you'll see that the wire isn't actually going all the way in here. It's just going a little bit past these first uh, wings or these second wings here. That's fine. It's still going to be a really good crimp. Again, it, it, I go into the terminal because that helps with control. Let's do a male. Let me show you this here. This is a male ATX. This is for extensions only. Again, you can see the long wings. And it is done. They are all done the same way. Get it up in the middle. Make sure that I am doing my normal. Again, I'm going to do my three millimeter just because that's what I'm used to doing. And we're going to put it in. And the same thing. You know what? I think I'm going to put a little bit more crimp on there. So that it holds. Because as you can see, even with the three millimeter on the male terminals, uh, it's not going to hold it. So we want the stress relief to hold the pin for us a little bit so that we can get it in underneath the gun. Again, on the male terminal, you can see that the two wings are on the top. They're a little bit different shaped, but we don't want to crush those. So we keep them on the top. And we just go all the way and then let the gun release. So on this one, we can see that this is the same crimp. You can see a little bit more metal on metal connection. Uh, it's not crushed. Uh, it's the same bite. Everything's the same. Uh, these are done the same way. Basically every crimp has the same basis of design. Uh, and they're all going to come out basically like that. So again, that was, that was a male ATX terminal. And this is a female ATX terminal. And let's grab a SATA crimp terminal because those are a little weird. Although they are pretty much the same thing. Long wings, inner wings, and then a little pitchfork. These are for your SATA crimp uh, connectors. Those are in my shop also. These are going to be done the same way. One... Oh, went too far. When you're buying terminals, make sure that you buy enough, especially if you're just learning, even if you've done it a while. And you now I'm going to stop right there. Get my wire in here. I'm going to get it in my gun. Okay. You'll notice, second it focuses here, that it is on the top. Now the three millimeter rule is a little bit different with SATA crimp. And you'll see because it's sticking out there that we're gonna wanna trim that. Now we can just do two millimeter from the beginning or we can just trim it, it's completely up to you. But we're gonna go ahead and finish the crimp on this. Now you'll notice that Again, insulation's fine. The crimp's done well. Now this needs to go though. When we are sleeving these, this stuff cannot be there. So what I do is I take my wire cutter, get it up underneath, and I snip it off. 
even if I were to do just two millimeter, I wouldn't want to leave any of that right there because this is where it actually connects onto the pin or onto the connector. So we're going to want to make sure this is nice and straight. If we need to re-straighten it out, we will. Uh, but we, we want none of this extra wire up in here, but we do want a full connection on here for the power. So that was a SATA crimp. Again, those are just for SATA crimp style. There is no... Uh, there is no crimps for the push-in style because obviously they're push-in. So we're going to grab a male four-pin connector. Now on these male four-pin connectors you'll see that the wings are not as long as the other ones. Uh, if you're trying to do double, this is not an issue. And I'll do a double wire with one of these to show you why this isn't an issue so much. Um, and I'll also try to show you how to do a double wire, but they're not going to look as pretty and I really, really hate uh, showing people how to do them because I, I think that they look ugly in a system, but sometimes you just need to do it. So we're going to grab this, we're going to put it in the crimper. Now you'll, you'll see that it's a little bit wider, so we can't push it in all the way. What we're going to do is just use our gun to push it up in there. And we're not going to pre-crimp this as much as we've been doing the other ones. In fact, we're just going to make a little bit of a U shape, just like that. And we're going to insert, insert it into the wire, just like we did for all the other ones. If I can get you a shot of that here real quick. It's in the wire. It's a three, so it's in there a little bit more, and that's what's actually holding on to it. Now, these are all the same way. We're going to use that little shelf on the bottom, and that's where we put it, and we're just going to crimp it. Now, I'll show you what this looks like. Now, you'll see that because of the shorter wings, it's not doing a complete bite in, uh, but it's still biting into the insulation, uh, which is perfectly fine for these. Uh, just the bite isn't as robust as ones with really long wings. Uh, I considered carrying the ones with really long wings, but they're like three times more expensive. So this was to save you guys money as well as uh, you know, be able to help you guys out and save money. It was all about money. So it's a good crimp. You can see that the insulation is all, all the way up. Uh, we have more connection in here. Uh, now let's show you how to do a double uh, with this. And I haven't done this in a while, so you guys are going to have to give me a break. I'm going to cut off two pieces of wire as examples. set them right here. I'm going to grab another crimp. Again, we're doing the three mil or more method here. We're going to set our crimp up. Now this is where the three mil method shines. We are putting both of the wires into, see if I can get a shot of that. We're putting both of the wire into the insulation up here, or into the shaft, I guess you want to call it. I don't know, I hate using that. It sounds stupid. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to press on this so that I can kind of compress the wire a little bit so that when I go to crimp this, I'm not going to crush it too much. Now we're going to crush this and we would be crushing this no matter what because we're trying to shove two wires into one pin and that never comes out really great. But our crimper is going to do a lot of the work for us here. And you're going to have to eyeball it because you're not going to be able to get it on the shelf. And we're just going to 
which can be a lot harder than it was before. Now this is where you'll see why I hate double wires. Even with long wings, they would have still barely went over uh, the double wire here. And of course you see that it did crush it a little bit, obviously, because we're trying to way push this crimper past uh, what it's supposed to be used for. Um, I would not suggest trying to do double wires on uh, the Lutro Custom crimper too often because that tooth in there is pretty fine and you'll eventually wear it out. Uh, however, the price of the tool isn't too extremely bad, so if you needed to have one for uh, doing these crimps and uh, one for your normal crimps, you could. Uh, but I'd rather you guys not have to buy two different ones. Uh, so you'll see that it's being held in there. Now, it's a strong crimp, but once you sleeve it is when it's really going to become strong because the stress relief will become the sleeve a little bit more than the stress relief that's jacked up right here. Again, I don't really like doing double wires like this, and this would be the same method that you'd use for all double wires. Uh, but A, it looks bad, B, it looks bad, C, it looks bad, and more so, you're taking away from the original stress relief uh, for any pins that you do this with. Uh, more so, remember what I said about uh, adding extra berth or girth to this area? Uh, if you're doing this on an ATX pin, uh, you are having to shove this in a very small area and you've basically already took up every little bit of extra space that you had by using these two wires. And this is the thinnest uh, wire that you know you can find for sleeving out there right now that's you know worth a darn of buying. Uh, so you can do this with the four pins simply because the connectors have an extra, uh, actually quite a bit extra room to do this with. Uh, again, I don't like that method. Uh, I don't really like doing them in the first place uh, simply because it looks bad. Now what I suggest doing is splicing into the wire, and I've already done a guide on that, how to do double wires back in the day. Um, I suggest that you guys give that a, a look. Now we're going to go ahead and do a DuPont which is for your USB headers and your sound headers and uh, everything else. And then we're going to do a male fan. And the female fan is done just the same, but for sake of time, I'm not going to do that because we've already hit 34 minutes. But I already knew that this was going to be a long guide. So let me grab the proper wire here because you're not going to be able to use 18 gauge wire when you do these wires. And, and, and he, as you guys know, I never cut any of this out, so I'll cut off the one that I did before. This is 22 gauge wire. Now this is the wire that you're going to want to buy. Uh, not obviously yellow, but this is what I have on hand right now. Uh, you're going to want to buy a 22 gauge wire uh, because the crimp is a lot smaller and of course it's for fan and you're going to want to do a couple of these uh, per fan. So. Again, I always, like I said, I use the three millimeter even on this one. Now for a fan, especially on the male, all we're doing is getting it on that shelf like we normally do and then pressing the gun all the way up and then it'll lock into place. This is where you can grab the wire and this is, this is the normal traditional method and this is the easiest way to do fans because they're so tiny uh, that you can do it this way. Uh, and it, I mean, you can try to pre-crimp it, but you, it, just don't do it. Just do it this way. Uh, so we're going to simply put the wire in and then make sure that the insulation is in all the way. Now, if you have proper 22 gauge wire, you won't be able to push the insulation all the way through. It'll hit exactly where it needs to hit. And then you simply crimp down. Now, on this, we will see that we have a little bit of bite. 
Uh, the insulation goes up to where it needs to. Focus. Insulation goes up to the, the inside wings and then the wire went up inside of here a little bit. Now, this is a really strong crimp for a really tiny wire. Uh, it works great. Again, we're not adding any girth to the pin. It'll fit right into that connector uh, and it'll snap right in. And you can even sleeve these if you had small enough sleeving and it would work just fine. Now we're going to do a DuPont terminal. Now a DuPont terminal is kind of weird because the wings are spaced out. They're not perfectly aligned. They kind of overlap. So we're going to put this in the crimper. We're going to do, we're going to try to do the same method that we did before. Get it. Get it out in there, square it up, take our wire off, and we will put it in the DuPont terminal. Again, we're only going to be able to push the insulation as far as it's going to let us, and that's going to be the perfect point for it. And then we're going to crimp. Now here's the deal with the DuPont terminal. You will see that it didn't do a bite straight on. The wings aren't made to do a bite straight on. They're actually overlapped like this. So what it did is it over and undered the wire. And the insulation is already all the way up and it's being held onto there really well. Now this is perfect for doing redoing your headers, doing uh, basically going hog wild and really custom sleeving uh, your rig and doing it the way that you want to. Now you'll see on this one, now that I'm looking at it in person, that I didn't get the insulation all the way up. Um, I would always suggest that you get the insulation. Yes, Lucho did a bad crimp, but that's okay. You'd want to get it all the way up to here and it's I know it's really hard for you guys to see this because it's really hard for me to see it too but try to get it all the way up there so that is a DuPont terminal again that's used for USB headers front panel headers power on off reset switches and whatnot so you just saw me go over the basic uses of a crimper the release I explained the crimper to you uh, let's show you a thicker wire uh, for let's do the 16 gauge uh, wire that I have and this is again where these shine because if you have a thicker wire and this wire is specifically made for heat shrinkless I had this custom made you will not be able to buy this uh, anywhere because they normally have a very very thick outer insulation so I did a bunch of measuring and this is what I came up with uh, so and you'll see here that it's easy to bend and it keeps its shape now the reason that I did something like this is because when you do heat shrinkless if you combine this with a good sleeve you should be able to train your wires bend them and they will stay exactly the way you want them so you'll have perfect routing uh, and everything of the sort uh, so we're going to pre-crimp our pin like we always do again this is a thicker insulation so we're probably only going to need one click and with the 16 gauge wire we're going to have a lot more wire to work with so it's going to be a lot harder to get everything inside the way we want. In fact, you will notice that I just had a wire pop out on me. Now, that extra wire that just popped out, what we can do is we try not to let that happen, but we'll just go ahead and snip those two 
those two little wires, and now it's set up exactly the way we want. And it's nice and clean. We're going to put it in the crimper, put it on the shelf. And we're going to crimp it down. Now, again, I mill these for this thicker wire. You will notice that the insulation is all the way up, uh, that it didn't crush it, and that the bite is perfectly into the wire. Uh, you'll notice that there's a lot more metal there, which, again, for those of you that like to overclock and want, uh, you know, to make sure that stuff isn't going to melt on you, 18 gauge wire, honestly, is fine for everything, even you major overclockers. Uh, but if you're paranoid and you want some wire that's going to be easier to train, then your 16 gauge is going to be the way you want to go. But it's going to take you a little bit more uh, time and a little bit more training to get you accustomed to it. But I always, I completely suggest it. I think it's an awesome idea. Um, obviously, I made the wire, so I thought it was a good idea. But you'll see that even with the thicker insulation, that we are still not adding a lot of amount and it's not crushing the wire, it's not crushing the pin, and it's not crushing the insulation. So we, we added a little bit more than that other, uh, than the other one, the 18 gauge UL uh, double zero or triple zero uh, seven wire, uh, but this is still very easily uh, sleeved in heat shrinkless style. Now, I have an 18 gauge that is the same outer diameter as this, uh, but it has an 18 gauge on the inside, so it makes it easier to get into here without much of a mess. Uh, as you can see, the 16 gauge is actually even more robust of a crimp, and it'll hold more poundage uh, when I did stress testing uh, than any other wire. Uh, that is simply because it has more wires crimped into here and so it's a lot stronger of wire so that will pretty much conclude the crimping tutorial i hope that i've went over everything i've spent 45 minutes going through everything here uh the lutro customs crimper is uh available in my store like i said it comes ready to go I already have a few crimps on it just to make sure that it's set up and ready to go for you. Uh, and crimping is easy guys. Uh, if you just take your time, you make sure uh, that you have some good tools, like I said, to make sure that you're doing a good job and you have really good wire. Uh, everything makes a difference. You can have some spaghetti crappy wire and you'll have a hard time with this. So make sure that you're choosing your supplies wisely. Make sure that you're getting the right pins for the right job uh, and try not to do double pins if you can. Uh, try to route your wires. If you're doing custom cabling in the first place, you should be able to uh, think ahead and be able to uh, design out the cabling the way you want it to be. Uh, if you're making custom cables, I will say this right off the bat. If you're making OEM cables, please do a pin out. Get a piece of paper, write two boxes with 24 boxes and number them one through whatever and make sure that you're looking at it from you know one point of view and match those boxes up so that you have a pin out and do that for every wire so that you are sure that you're rehooking back up your power supply properly. I cannot uh, stress enough how many times people get on the forums, I mess this up, I need a pin out. Make your own pin out so that you are confident that you have it right. Because reading a pin out sometimes can be hard if you've never done it. So this will conclude the crimping tutorial. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you guys can uh, ask them on my Facebook, which is www.facebook.com forward slash Lutro Customs. Uh, you can also go to LutroCustoms.com and go to the contact me and email me through that method. Uh, again, thanks for you guys making this what this is. I hope that you learned uh, from this tutorial that you guys will you know, feel a little bit more uh, confident in crimping. 
Uh, one last thing, all crimpers work basically the same. Uh, again, but what makes a good crimper uh, from a bad crimper is the quality, uh, if it does the bite or not, and if it's not crushing the wire. Like I, I, I think I went over it about 20 times. Uh, these are very important things when you're sleeving and they make the difference between you having a very easy time sleeving and you having a very hard time sleeving. Uh, so again, if you have any more questions, please get a hold of me, uh, but that's it for today. Thanks guys.